So this is the lesson for exponential regression. We're gonna have two different types of regressions that we're gonna be calculating the equations from. Um, you're gonna have uh, regressions from a graph and regressions from a table. So the way that you have to do it is you have to go into your stat and edit and then do a stat calc for exponential regression. You see the directions right in the middle there. Um, what we're figuring out is the exponential regression equation. This f of x equals a times b to the x power. The calculator will actually give you what a is and what b is. Um, you notice on the right hand side here, uh, sometimes you're going to have to round to the nearest tenth. Sometimes you're going to have to round to the nearest hundredth. Sometimes to the nearest thousandth. Sometimes to the nearest ten thousandth. Also, sometimes you're going to have to find specific values. Notice that. In our table, we have miscellaneous numbers, but they go up to 19, but then they want you to figure out what the F of 20 is. So we'll talk about how to do that. So let's talk about the graphs first, all right? First of all, notice on this graph, there are points along our exponential curve here, all right? You can only use the values that you know for sure. So we know for sure what the value of this point right here is, all right? We know what the value of that point is. Now, when you write down a coordinate, coordinates are always written X comma Y. Remember that your X value is how many you go over and your Y value is how many you go up or down. In this case, it's up because these are all positive numbers going up. So when we take a look at this graph, the first thing that we want to do is identify the points on our curve. So this point up here is over to negative three and up to positive 16. So I'm just going to write that down. I think it helps to write these things down. So we have negative three comma 16. This point is over to negative two up to positive eight. So it's negative two comma eight. This point is over to negative one up to positive four. So negative one comma four. This point is over zero up to two. So we have zero comma two. And then this point is over to one up to one. So we have one comma one. So those are the five points that we know for sure. Now, are there really points all along this curve? Yes. Do we know exactly what they are? No. So you can only use the points, the coordinates that you can tell for sure. So what we're going to do in the calculator to figure out the equation of this exponential curve is we're going to go to stat. Then we're going to go to edit because we want to type these values into our L1 and into our L2. L1 is our X values and L2 being our Y values. So in L1, it doesn't matter if you go from the lowest to the highest or the highest to the lowest, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to start off at the top of my graph. So I have negative three as my X value. I have negative two going down that graph. I have negative one, I have zero, and I have one. So those are my X values on my graph. I put those in my L1 column. Now I'm gonna write down my Y values. So negative three goes with 16, negative two goes with eight, negative one goes with four, negative, uh, sorry, zero goes with two, and one goes with one. So those are my coordinates of my graph that I know. So now I'm going to do stat and calc. So I'm going to hit the stat button again. And again, always make sure that you don't have any typos. It's always a good thing to double check your points before you do your calculations, because there's no way to tell if you did it right or wrong. All right. So you just got to double check your typos. Hit stat. And then you're going to go over, use the arrow pad to go over to calc. Now, what we're looking for is we're looking for zero, which is our exponential regression. When you first go tab over to calc, you won't see a zero there. 
you need to go down to zero or you can just hit the zero on the calculator or we can just move our things down until we get to exp reg that stands for exponential regression all right so that's the function that we want so we're going to hit enter it's going to ask you do you want to use l1 and l2 yes we do so we're just going to go down to calculate and then hit enter when you do that it does its magic and you see the generic form of an exponential equation a times b to the x power a it's saying is two and b is 0 0.5 so what my equation of this blue curve is is we have y equals or f of x equals either one remember they're interchangeable with each other equals two times 0 0.5 to the x power that is our equation there's no more work to be done for that question. All that we're doing is figuring out the equation from the regression, all right? So this is what your answer is, two times 0 0.5 to the X power. So the next thing that, um, the next thing that we have to do is we have to figure out your table. Um, let me go back to the graph for one second. Um, on your homework today, sometimes you'll be given the points Sometimes you won't be given the points. Um, I think it helps to write them down. Uh, do you have to write them in class kick? No, you do not, all right? Um, but I think it helps to write them down just so that you can make sure that you're typing them into your calculator correctly, all right? Um, so in your table, all right, now we're looking at bottle of water, bottles of water. You're gonna have different kinds of word problems today. Bottles of water, years since 1980 and the per capita bottle of water consumption in gallons. Um, so this is what our um, table is. So I'm gonna go to calc and edit. Uh, I don't want these numbers, all right? I don't want these numbers. So I'm going to go through and delete all these because that was from the previous question. So now I'm gonna go back to my L1. You can just always assume that this first column is your L1 and the second column is your L2. All right, they won't try and trick you like that. So I'm gonna have zero, I'm gonna have five, I'm gonna have 10, I'm gonna have 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And then in my L2 column, which is my Y column here, I'm gonna have 2.4, 4.5, 8 or 8.0. You don't need to type in the point zero. 10.7, uh, 11.6, 12.5, 13.1, 16 or 16.0, and then 18.1. So always make sure that Double check your values real quick. All right, these look good to me. Uh, so those are your L1 and your L2. I'm gonna go to stat, you do all these the same way, stat and then calc. You don't see the zero with exponential regression there. You can either use the arrow pad to go down to the zero or just type the number zero and it'll do it automatically for you. Do we want to use L1 and L2? Yes, we do. So we're gonna go down to calculate. And then it's going to give you this big blah, 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 blah thing. So notice that we got really long decimal answers. Most of the time you will get big, long, ugly decimal answers. So in the questions today on your homework, sometimes they ask you to round to the nearest 10th, to the nearest 100th, the nearest 1,000th, or the nearest 10,000th. If we were rounding these to the nearest tenth, um, what you would have, now notice that you have a T here and you have a W here. Sometimes they're picky, sometimes they're not. Um, sometimes they just have you do F of X. Sometimes in this case, you might have a W equals or a W of T equals. All right, and then you might have a T in your actual equation part, all right, to the T power, 
All right, that would be to the T power. Um, so it all depends on what you're actually talking about here. So just pay, pay attention to the letters and how they want you to type in your letters. Um, so I'm just gonna do use Y equals and I'm gonna use X, but it's not X, it's to the X power. So I shouldn't have wrote that. So we have A times B. So if we were rounding to the nearest 10th, our A rounded to the nearest 10th, the five is in the tenths place. We would have to look at the number after it. If we were rounding to the nearest tenth, this would be 2.6 times your B value rounded to the nearest tenth would be 1.1 to the X power. So if we were rounding to the nearest tenth, that would be our equation. If we were rounding to the nearest hundredth, that's two places after the decimal point. So we would have 2.59 times this would be one point, this would be 1.11 if we were rounding to the nearest hundredth to the X power. So if we were rounding to the nearest hundredth, that's what your equation would look like. If we were rounding to the nearest thousandth, thousandth is three places after the decimal point. So the, you'd have to look at the zero, that's four or lower, so that three would stay the same. We would have 2.593 times the five is in the thousandths place. So we have to look at the number after it. So we'd have 1.106 to the X power. If we were rounding to the nearest 10,000th, we would go out four decimal places. So this zero would stay the same because that two is four or lower. So we would have Y equals 2.593 um, times uh, the eight is in the 10,000th place. So we'd have to look at the number after that's five or higher. So that eight would turn into a nine. So times 1.1059 to the X power. So it all depends on what they ask you to round to. All right, that all depends on what they ask you to round to. Um, when they say find the F of 20, all right, first of all, you have to come up with your equation first before you do the F of 20. So let's say that we are subbing it into the tenths one, all right? If we are subbing in the F of 20 into our tenths, all that you're gonna do now to get off of the screen, you have to hit second and quit, all right? Second and quit, which is the mode button. Um, so what, if you're looking for the F of 20, all that you're gonna do is type the 20 in for X. So we would have 2.6, times 1.1 carrot button 20. Because remember, this is what your X is. So we're taking that X and taking that 20 and subbing it in for your X. So then you just hit equals and you get this. Again, it all depends. Sometimes they have you rounded to the nearest whole number or to the nearest 10, right? If you're rounding to the nearest whole number, this would be 17. If we were rounding to the nearest tens place, it would be 20. If we were rounding to the nearest 10th, it'd be 17.5. If we were rounding to the nearest hundredth, it'd be 17.49. Again, it all depends on what they ask you to round it to. But again, all of these are done the same exact way. You have to use that stat button, type in your L1 and your L2, go to calc, and then you want zero, which is the exponential regression. All right. Zero is your exponential regression. That's the one that you want. Just be very, very careful on the route.